Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome to each and every one of you, especially those of you that are visiting with us, those of you that are listening live on the radio. It's great to have you part of our community. Uh, since we do have some visitors and people that are joining us, uh, the easiest way to follow along is take your bulletin, stick it in the back, let that side panel stick out, and follow along according to that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I've ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with him a word who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace, and spitting but the Lord God helps me therefore I have not been disgraced therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame he who vindicates me is near who will contend with me let us stand up together who is my adversary let him come near to me behold the Lord God helps me who will declare me guilty Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? 
Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that those who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses, so they obey us. We guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ship also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, sustaining the whole body, setting the fire of the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers. These things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives? Or a grape vine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. The 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. When the disciples came to Jesus, they saw a great crowd around him and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, Immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can... All things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Did you know, if you suffer from kidney stones, new research prescribes 
frequent trips to theme parks. Yes, I said theme parks. According to a study by Michigan State's College of Osteopathic Medicine, kidney stones can be dislodged by roller coasters. To test this effectiveness, patients rode roller coasters, eventually determining that Disneyland's Big Thunder Mountain was the most effective at dislodging these stones, believe it or not. Researchers in China have discovered a 115 pound, four and a half foot long giant salamander in an underground cave. They estimate that this giant salamander is over 200 years old, believe it or not. Growing up, there was a show that I liked to watch. You could probably guess it. It was Ripley's Believe It or Not. The show would describe bizarre events and items so strange and so unusual that viewers would question their claims. I think many in our world today would say things like God, creation, miracles, and other biblical truths are unbelievable, especially based on our own human understanding. But just because we can't prove something or we cannot understand it with our weak minds doesn't mean it's not true. More importantly, truth isn't dependent on belief. Rather, belief is dependent on truth. In our lesson for today, there's a father, and he approaches Jesus, and he is living every parent's worst nightmare. There's something terribly wrong with this child, and he is powerless to do anything about it. The father of a possessed boy is desperate. He's losing hope that his son will ever be normal again. He first asked the disciples if they could help. They try, but they lack faith, and they're not able to do anything for him. So then, at a last resort, he reaches out to Jesus and says, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus replies, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Notice Jesus doesn't just say, all things are possible. He actually says, all things are possible for the one who believes. And in that moment, the boy's father, desperately battling his own doubts and fears, says the most honest thing that he could say, I believe, help my unbelief. Jesus does what the disciples could not do. He extracts the demon from the boy. He gives the boy and his family a new life to live. Through Jesus, this boy is made whole again. His family is restored. Through Jesus, God is putting back his broken creation back together again. One person, one family, one congregation, and one community at a time. And that's precisely what Jesus is doing here this morning. He is restoring his broken creation. He is specifically putting you and me back together again. Jesus is here. Yes, right here, right now, putting us all back together again, one piece at a time. I believe. Help my unbelief. What a simple way to describe the war that goes on in our hearts and in our minds. It's the Christian classic paradox. We believe, yet we disbelieve. We trust, yet we trust no one. We have a spiritual struggle, an inner tension, and this inner tension is fighting to do what is good, right, and holy. That's why you woke up and came here this morning. You know this is where you belong, but the struggle is real. And that's why you're not here each and every week. 
The reality is that we are no better than the disciples or the Father. And though we profess our faith in Jesus, we are often believers in name only, which leaves us to utter the same cry, I believe, help my unbelief. But Jesus has compassion on us, and he doesn't leave us in this state of unbelief. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus opens us up and pours the Holy Spirit into us. Jesus immediately follows his statement, If I can, with these comforting words, all things are possible for the one who believes. With this statement, Jesus calls the Father and the disciples to faith in the faithful one. And he does the same thing today for you and me. For Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead are facts of your faith. You see, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. The fact remains, it's still true. So this one, the one and only triune God himself who died and lives again, can most certainly do what he claims and promises to do. In his mercy, he will comfort your disbelief and say all things are possible for the one who believes. But let us not assume, like some, that this means that if things don't go right in our life, that we must not have enough faith or that we must not believe enough. That's the lie of the devil. On the contrary, our faith is not based on what we think or what we do. Our faith is always based on the faithful one, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in him, all things are possible. I dare say that there's a lot at stake. As our gospel lesson makes it abundantly clear, evil is real. The devil is real. And he wants you to doubt the gifts of Jesus and that they are for you. For the devil delights in your unbelief. Yet we are reminded that the Lord's gifts are always for you right here on Sunday mornings. This is where you receive the healing voice of Jesus. This is where you receive the supper that makes you whole again. And this is where you are united and strengthened as a community of believers. So here's your one takeaway. Let's face it. Sometimes things are simply too impossible and improbable to believe. The Father's confession, I believe, help my unbelief, is the straight daily life and struggle of the baptized Christian. It was the struggle of the disciples. It's your struggle, and it's most certainly mine. Sometimes the realities of our sinful world cause us to wonder if God really loves us, and if he makes a difference in our lives? The answer, of course, is yes. It's always yes that he can and does what he promises. He demonstrates this daily through all that he does for you and through you, and he daily reminds you that through his powerful promise, all things are possible, no matter how unbelievable they might be. The truth is this, Jesus has done it all. He has secured your salvation and has defeated all the evil demons in you. Believe it or not, it's still true. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For your holy Christian church, O Prince of Peace, especially the persecuted Christians in Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Turkey, and throughout the world, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Argentina, Lord, in your mercy, for all pastors, O Bishop of Souls, especially Matthew, our Synod's president, Timothy, our district president, Mark, our circuit visitor, Josman, our pastor, and for all who serve this congregation, that in all things they speak to truth and love and be faithful in their witness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen.
For those in need of your healing touch, oh great physician, especially Sharon, Michael, Jerry, Lawanda, Alma, Malachi, Jolene, and Donna, Pauline, June, Tom, Kenneth, Hal, Eleanor, Bernadette, and Lois, Seth, Connie, Cheryl, and Bonnie. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who celebrate the gift of life, O Creator, blessed, especially Ross, Trenton, and Adam. Lord, in your mercy. For those who celebrate the gift of baptism, O Triune God, especially Carol, Gibson, Cindy, Emily, Len, and Ken. Lord, in your mercy. For all of our students, O Triune, True, and Only Light, especially Ariana and family, Brock and family, Zoe and family. We give thanks to you for these school families and ask that they would continue to grow in faith and in love for you. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who celebrate the gift of marriage, O faithful Lord, especially Jason and Tina, who celebrated 25 years of marriage this week, may they always be faithful to the promises you made with them. Lord, in your mercy. For those who come to your altar this day, O bread of life, especially that we would believe the unbelievable, be forgiven of all of our sins, placed under your protection and care, and granted the peace of your holy touch. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.